What is the primary objective of today's renewed race to the moon? At its core, it's the push to establish a lasting human presence beyond Earth. Reaching the moon first in the coming years is only one part of the challenge. The ability to build and maintain a functional lunar base will be just as important in determining the true outcome of this competition. SpaceX is drawing major attention with its bold plan to build a moon base using its fully reusable giant rocket Starship. In today's episode, we'll explore how SpaceX aims to construct this lunar outpost and review the essential preparation needed to make it possible. For many people, the U.S. is seen as the winner of the first moon race because American astronauts landed on the lunar surface multiple times during the 20th century. That achievement was historic, and it reshaped humanity's understanding of what we could accomplish. However, it doesn't mean that today's race is any less important. In fact, the stakes are far greater now than they were decades ago. This new effort is not only about planting a flag, it's about establishing a lasting presence, learning to live there, and using the moon as the foundation for a new era of exploration. This return is the moment when humanity will attempt to create the first foothold of a civilization beyond Earth. A permanent base on the moon could become an outpost that enables deeper journeys into the solar system. It could support scientific research, resource extraction, and even the construction of spacecraft that would be too large or too difficult to build on Earth. For this reason, landing astronauts again is only the first step. After people arrive, bases will need to be built. These bases must be reliable, safe, and capable of expanding over time. That leads to the obvious question, how will these bases actually be built? Many people imagine what their components will be constructed on Earth. Many people imagine that their components will be constructed on Earth similar to the way space station modules are built, and then shipped to the moon to be assembled. Others imagine sending heavy construction equipment that can shape lunar resources into usable materials. Both ideas are valid, and both have been discussed for decades. However, each comes with major challenges. Transporting large structures from Earth is expensive and slow. Bringing construction machinery to the moon is equally difficult. And using local materials requires a level of infrastructure that does not exist yet. Because of these hurdles, SpaceX has proposed a very different idea. Instead of building modules on Earth or constructing them from scratch on the lunar surface, surface, they could convert the lander itself into a moon base. Starship, the enormous vehicle designed for the Artemis program, could serve as both the transport system and the foundation of the first outpost. This concept sounds bold and imaginative, but it immediately raises the question of how such a tall and massive vehicle could become a functional lunar habitat. For long-term use, Starship would need to be positioned horizontally so that a living, so that living and working inside the structure becomes comfortable and practical. A horizontal layout would also make it easier to integrate with the terrain and connect future expansions. In conventional thinking, tipping a structure as large as Starship would require a giant crane or a massive support frame, both of which would be extremely difficult to deliver to the moon. Transporting such equipment would defeat the purpose of simplifying construction, therefore another solution is needed. One of the most reasonable approaches is similar to concepts proposed by Astro Strom. In this scenario, once Starship lands, rovers would clear and level the surrounding terrain. Any small hills would be broken down, and low areas will be filled to create a stable work area. After this preparation, a large air cushion would be deployed beside Starship. This cushion would be wider than the vehicle and designed to support its weight. Once the cushion is confirmed to be stable, Starship's landing legs would be adjusted. Since the legs are designed to fold, two of them could retract slowly, allowing the vehicle to lean toward the cushion. The cushion would compress gently, supporting Starship's gradual descent without causing sudden impacts that could damage the structure or its internal systems. After the vehicle is resting on the cushion, the air would be released gradually, lowering the ship onto the lunar surface. The cushion would remain as a liner or be removed. When Starship is in position, rovers would begin covering it with a protective layer made from lunar regolith. This layer would serve as radiation shielding, improve thermal stability, and protect the base from micrometeorites. At the same time, the interior would be reconfigured. Since Starship's habitat is originally oriented vertically, SpaceX could design its internal structure 
structure to be easily rearranged for horizontal living. This is one possible vision of how a SpaceX moon base could take shape. Do you think this approach is better than other moon base plans? Respond with yes or no in the comment section down below. To me, this approach offers a wide range of advantages that go far beyond convenience. The first and most immediate benefit is the dramatic reduction in time and effort required to establish a functioning lunar outpost. Traditional methods would require NASA to transport numerous base components, specialized modules, and construction machinery from Earth to the Moon. Each of those systems is heavy, complex, and expensive to launch. Building a base in this way would demand multiple missions with large payloads, and every additional flight adds cost, risk, and delays. By contrast, if Starship itself becomes the moon base, NASA and SpaceX eliminate the need to transport an entire catalog of base hardware. Instead, they only need to focus on a compact and efficient inflatable air cushion system that can be stored throughout the journey. The main engineering challenge would be perfecting the controlled process of lowering the lander from vertical to horizontal. Once this conversion is complete, the entire systems can be rearranged, and the outpost would be ready for habitation. Speed matters in this new era of lunar exploration. The sooner a stable base is established, the sooner scientific research, resource extraction, and long-term development can begin. In a competitive environment, being the first to build a sustainable presence could shape the future of lunar activity for decades. That alone gives this strategy enormous strategic value. Another major benefit is the full use of Starship's potential. A lander of this scale, equipped with advanced life support, power systems, communication equipment, and enormous internal volume, offers far more capability than a small, dedicated lander. If Starship were used only as a landing vehicle and then discarded, a significant portion of its value would be wasted. Repurposing the ship into a moon base allows NASA and SpaceX to preserve and reuse the technology already built into it. Converting it into a horizontal habitat optimizes every dollar, every hour, and every engineering advancement invested in its creation. Starship's true strength, however, lies in its long-term potential. Its large size makes it an ideal foundation for a base that can grow into a substantial lunar habitat. At first, the living area might be limited to the nose cone and payload sections. Even that alone would offer more room and improved facilities compared to many existing space stations. But once the crew settles in, they could begin to expand the usable volume by transforming the fuel tank sections. This would eventually create interior space measuring thousands of cubic meters, providing room for laboratories, workshops, storage areas, and living quarters for dozens of astronauts. This capability is one of the reasons SpaceX supporters defend Starship whenever it's compared with more traditional lunar landers. Smaller landers may help accelerate early mission schedules, but they remain limited to short-term goals and small cargo capacities. They can't compete with the scale and adaptability of a repurposed Starship when the time comes to build permanent infrastructure on the moon. To understand the urgency behind this strategy, it helps to look at China's plans. China currently aims to land humans on the moon around 2030. After making that first landing, they plan to spend the next five years building a permanent outpost. Their base, named the International Lunar Research Station, is being developed in partnership with Russia and already has a clear defined roadmap. China's recent missions show consistent progress, landing on the far side of the moon, retrieving samples, and advancing robotic exploration. If their timeline remains stable, they may achieve both their 2030 and 2035 goals. This is why NASA feels immense pressure. The U.S. needs to land astronauts again and begin constructing a base before China completes its milestones. Even under optimistic projections, astronauts may not return until 2027, leaving roughly three years before China arrives. Building a base the traditional way would likely be too slow. It'd require numerous expensive launches, and the final result would likely be a small, limited outpost. By contrast, if NASA adopts the Starship approach, a large and capable base could be established almost immediately after the first landing. It offers speed, efficiency, and a level of long-term potential that traditional landers simply cannot match. SpaceX still faces a long list of challenges before it can take on such a critical role in 
humanity's return to the moon. The most urgent task is completing the final design of the Starship human landing system. This vehicle is drawn both excitement and criticism, and it remains the centerpiece of NASA's Artemis plans. SpaceX will likely need to unveil a full prototype in the first half of next year in order to keep the program on schedule. If the need of converting Starship into a lunar base is truly going to be implemented, SpaceX will also need to present a detailed conversion plan. This includes outlining how the vehicle will transition to a horizontal position, how its interior will be reshaped into a livable habitat, and what timeline is required to make the process safe and reliable. Before any of that can happen, the Starship system must demonstrate its fundamental capabilities. It still needs to reach orbit, deploy payloads, and land both stages safely. These basic milestones have not yet been completed and they form the foundation of every future lunar mission. To reach the moon, Starship must be able to reach orbit efficiently. To land on the moon, it first needs to prove that it can land consistently on Earth. These essential achievements are expected to begin taking shape with the V3 flights next year. Once those steps are in motion, SpaceX must develop the in-orbit refilling system. This capability is vital for sending Starship to the moon because the vehicle requires multiple refilling flights to carry enough propellant for the journey. Refilling is also one of the most debated aspects of the program, yet SpaceX leaders remain confident. They often compare the challenge to the Dragon spacecraft docking with the ISS, a complex task the company has already mastered. All of this makes next year one of the most important in the history of Starship. It's a period where delays could jeopardize the entire schedule. The potential of Starship has been described in detail, but potential alone is not enough. SpaceX must overcome every challenge along the way or the vision will remain only that, a vision. Humanity is surely approaching the moon with a mindset very different from the one that guided the missions of the past. This time, we are not simply visiting. We are preparing to build homes and transform the moon into a new world for future generations. Every major spacefaring nation understands this, which is why constructing a lunar base has become the true centerpiece of the modern moon race. In this race, SpaceX has captured global attention with its bold idea of transforming a giant transport vehicle into a fully functional moon moon base. This concept offers a powerful advantage in both speed and long-term growth, especially when competing against China's accelerating lunar program. Yet the road to turning this ambitious idea into reality is filled with obstacles. Even so, this is SpaceX, an organization that has repeatedly reshaped the aerospace industry over the past two decades. If they can solve the challenges ahead, the moon base will be only the beginning. Many more more possibilities will open once humanity is established on the lunar surface. But that will be a story for another episode. Until then, stay tuned. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.